The early research in nucleic acid synthesis was started by Gobind Karana, and in 1968, he went on to win a Nobel Prize for his work with other collaborators in deciphering the genetic code. The methodology was cumbersome. It would literally take an army of postdocs many months just to synthesize a small number of fragments. Bob Lessinger, who was a professor at Northwestern University, which is where I went to graduate school, developed three very important improvements to the method of synthesis. One was to go to a triester chemistry, the other to do it on a solid support, and the third was to change a phosphate to a phosphite methodology. So I was very fortunate to be able to work in Bob's lab. Many companies had the idea that individuals would want to do the synthesis in their own labs. But biologists want to do biology, they don't want to be doing chemistry. And ultimately, that gave rise to core labs, which I established one at the University of Iowa. What I recognized is that ultimately, a company could be doing this much more efficiently than the core labs. This was the origin of IDT. What I felt was, rather than trying to inflate the cost of your product, we could drive down the cost through efficiencies and expand the use, and the rest of the industry followed along with us. We really led that effort to advocate for the customer, and today, experiments that use hundreds of thousands of oligonucleotides would be totally impossible if they cost what they were before. The products fall into two main categories of genomic applications. One is genetic analysis, where PCR is a primary tool in almost every reaction. Perry Mullis invented that and won the Nobel Prize. And a significant amount of our oligos are used in that application. In addition to PCR, in the last 10 years, has been a new methodology for DNA sequencing. And now it became so efficient, it's possible to sequence an entire genome now for roughly $1,000, maybe a little more, but eventually it'll be in that range. Sequencing was done initially using the Sanger method, and the first consensus draft of the sequence was established around the year 2000. But we know that we're not all identical twins. Finding those differences are important for what is being called personalized medicine where we treat a patient not only based on external symptoms, but based on the genotype they have, which may affect how they react to certain medications, which therapies are most important. It's also going to be an important tool in cancer diagnosis. So there's a tremendous promise you know, that this new methodology, the so-called next generation sequencing, provides. And we're right in the middle of that because all the steps in the pathway for doing that require oligos. The second category of genomic applications is functional genomics, where you deliver an oligonucleotide into the cell, and the oligonucleotide has some function. On the functional genomic side, we've been involved at every level. We've been involved at antisense, we've been involved in RNAi, and now with CRISPRs. And we've come up with a unique design for both the CRISPR RNAs and for the Cas9 protein, the nuclease that cuts the DNA. And we're just now recently offering that high-fidelity Cas9 protein. So IDT is broadening its base of products, not just oligos, but enzymes and other things that are used by molecular biologists. The RNAsH type 2, we discovered, had the interesting property that will cleave after a single RNA base. And this provided the basis for using block primers in so-called RHPCR that tremendously reduces side reactions, primer dimers, and off-target effects. So we're very excited about that, and we first launched the product most recently called RAM-SNP to detect individual nucleotide polymorphisms in a particular species. The customer, helping them with their applications, that really is the ethics behind IDT. We advocate for the customers. We provide the highest level of tech support. Everybody gets a human voice when they call in. We drive down costs of the oligos so that new applications can emerge. And with the earnings that we have, we support many, many charitable organizations. Charitable giving is really one of the main drivers for me personally 
to continue and, and to grow the company. We've given a million dollars to the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. We've given $200,000 for there to be a smart board in every classroom in the Iowa City Public School District from kindergarten through 12th grade. And more recently, we've given $140,000 to the Field Museum for their exhibit on specimens. At the end of 30 years, we can look back and see all that we've accomplished and only hope that in the next 30 years, we'll be able to accomplish as much.